Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Guys at Magic. This is Hunter, David, Steven, and Shane. Save it up, boys. Yo, what's going on? Hello, friends. Sup, nerds? We are back with more spoilers from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Today being Monday, October 30th, 2023. We didn't really get too many spoilers over the weekend like a normal spoiler season, but we did get one rare. So we'll talk about that one first and then get into all the rares and mythics that they talked about today. Before we get started, I just want to remind everybody, yes, we are talking about just the rares and mythics. If you wanted to see all the spoilers in case you missed any, go follow us on our Instagram. That's at Guys at Magic. We post all the comments and uncommons as well. So let's go ahead and start this off with Magmatic Galleon. It is three and two red for a 5-5 five, five artifact vehicle. It says when Magmatic Galleon enters the battlefield, it deals five damage to target creature and opponent controls. And whenever one or more creatures your opponents control are dealt excess non-combat damage, create a treasure token. Crew cost of two. Hmm. Love it. I think this that honestly, these vehicles are getting better and better. I was going to say, this doesn't even need to be a vehicle. Do no. tell. Do tell. This enters the battlefield, and it does damage, and then it's just whenever one or more opponents are dealt excess combat damage, make a token? Why does, it, why does this need to be a vehicle? Because it's, it's a 5-5. Five, five, Non-combat so damage. Right. Non combat damage. You said combat. I don't even. Uh, I wouldn't. My, my, my whole point still. Why does this need to be a vehicle? Because if this does combat damage, it's not doing its own thing. You know, because yeah. boats will burn in lava. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I get it. This dude knows how to boat. I'm not on this card. I mean, it's five damage to a creature. That could potentially make you a treasure the turn it comes in. Sure. So now I've spent four mana to deal five damage. Well, hopefully, uh, kill something. Yeah. I mean, sure. And you got a five five with a crew cost of just two. So Seems maybe. Expensive. I don't know. I'm not that high on this card either. I am here for it. I think this is actually pretty dope. Um, I like the treasure aspect. I love the fact that this like nuke something on its own. Like five damage is gonna be enough to just like kill probably whatever you need this to kill. And then like it's a crude cost of two, so it's gonna be low enough where your small little irrelevant creature that wasn't doing anything anymore can now tap a crew this and just start beating your opponents to death with it. I'm actually much higher on this card. We'll, we'll see, see if it's in standard. Hey. Moving on to Starved Revenant. Starved Revenant is 2 and 2 black for a 4-4 creature spirit horror. It says when it enters the battlefield, surveil 2. Then, for each card surveilled to the top of your library this way, draw a card and lose 3 life. It also has Descend 8, which means whenever you draw a card, if you have 8 or more permanent cards in your graveyard, target opponent loses 1 life, and you gain 1 life. Shane, you were mentioning Surveil, weren't you? Was I? I thought I was mentioning Dredge. Never mind. <laughs> I mean, this is still cool. This is like, you could just draw two, right? If you leave them both on top. And then take six. I was going to say, that's, that's a pretty hefty cost. Yeah, I know. I, oh, you're right. But, you know, ideally, or you, you already have take eight. four. And say, ideally, you already have eight, and you can gain two life back. I kind of like this card. That Descent eight is really good. That happens whenever you draw a card. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This might synergize pretty well with Shieldred. It, oh, yeah. into the abyss, it, just might, it just might, dude. <laughs> the problem is that four slot's so competitive in that deck, but yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about this card. I do love the artwork for this thing. It reminds me, uh, there's some creatures in Elden Ring that have like a bunch of arms. I don't know. It looks kind of like this, and they're absolutely terrifying. Yeah, spider humans, not cool. He's starved. Hungry. Moving on to a card that I believe Steven really wanted to talk about. This is the Ancient One. It's blue and black for 8-8. Legendary Creature Spirit God. It's got Descend 8, which means the Ancient One can't attack or block if you have less than 8 permanents in your graveyard. It has another ability to pay 2, a blue and a black, to draw a card, then discard a card. When you do, target player mills cards equals the discarded card's mana value. I don't I can want see to why, about Steven. it. I want to be about it. I can see why, Steven. Are you saying two mana for an 8-8 eight, eight is good? I mean, I don't... Dude, this card's nuts. I yeah. love this card. <laughs> Big old mill theme for you, Steven. You yeah. Know, I, I don't know how high I am on this, man. If this was just like a 9-9, nine, nine, then maybe it would have me so... Oh, my like, God. Coming in at only an 8-8 eight, eight for two whole mana? 
I mean, David, you're not blocking for a long ass time. I think I think that this actually turns on relatively quickly. In, in all fairness, I'm I'm talking shit, but like this card is really good, and I do think that if you are like really determined to self mill, you could probably get this thing up and moving by like turn four. Dude, Maybe. this has like Demir Mill, re- like the the amount of things we can do here. Did it bring what it back scary. to standard, Steven? No. Oh. I mean, it, it was a menace in standard. It was so not fun to play against. I don't know if this card actually would be good enough for standard. I, I think that this is one of those cards that, like, whenever you move to older formats, it becomes more powerful. I don't know. Mill theming in standard is always stupid, and I hate it. Nah, uh, <laughs> Hunter. Two mana, eight, eight, not good enough in standard. Nah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We gotta wait a little while for power creep, boys. Yeah. <laughs> When they drop the this can't attack or block, it's going to be descend four before we know it. It's going to be a one mana ten ten soon. <laughs> Let's move on to a card that I believe David will probably like because it's Rakdos. It's called a Molten Collapse. It's a black and a red for a sorcery. It says choose one. If you descend it this turn, you may choose both instead, which means you can descend if a permanent card has entered your graveyard this turn. Destroy target creature or planeswalker. Or destroy a target non-creature, non-land permanent with mana value one or less. Blow up their soul ring. Yeah, you were correct. You like it? Yeah, I like this card a lot, dude. Two mana for removal of two potential things? Like, that's pretty dope. And I mean, I don't know, play this with a fetch land and then you are good to go. Yeah, just a uh, Rakdo Sacrifice loves this card. Sorcery, just dude. Target, like... Destroy target creature or planeswalker. Given that this isn't a sorcery, but like this reminds me a lot of Fatal Push, and this potentially hits more things, and it doesn't have a restriction on it. Actually, what is the? What am I thinking now? So I think it's this exact color combination, and it just only destroys target creature. This is just like upside. Yeah, this this is literally just an upgrade over Dreadbore. All right, we are here for it. I think we Great. all are, right, Steven? Yep. Yeah, it's all right. It's yeah, all right. right. <laughs> it's no Demir 8-8, but it's all right. I understand. Moving on to Sentinel of the Nameless City. Two and a green for a 3-4 creature Merfolk Warrior Scout. It's got Vigilance. It says, whenever Sentinel of the Nameless City enters the battlefield or attacks, create a map token. Hmm. Oh, the way you read that, I thought you were going to say more. Yep, that's it. That's it. Why are we, why, why are we like shaming this card? I'm confused. Help me. No, I was shaming Hunter the way he read it. That's it. I, I, I don't, I'm not high on map tokens. I'm not sure how uh, how they're going to play out. Even if you're not high on map tokens, like this is three mana for a three four with vigilance and upside. Yeah, but green creatures yeah, always have stuff like that. Mm-hmm. We have three mana four fours now. This is also a merfolk, and it is a warrior, which I'm sure is going to be very relevant for the merfolk and probably relevant for the warrior portion at some point in this game. Yeah, but the map tokens just being able to only break at sorcery speed is terrible. I mean, the biggest issue I have here is this is still one mana more and half, less than half the amount of power of an 80. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, <laughs> this, this card gonna, is not going to function the same because it doesn't, it, it, this is a totally different card altogether. Like, I don't know. This, this might card be is a great. Pretty, yeah, this might be a really solid option for a three drop in a Merfolk deck. Potentially. This card is fantastic. It has Vigilance. It's a 3-4. It has a ton of upside, and then it can help trigger itself. It's great. The Merfolk deck uh, that does care about exploring, so I guess I'll give it that. True. Maybe it'll go in an upgrade. Maybe it will. This next card is Chamil, the Inner Sun. It's six generic mana for a legendary artifact that says spells you control can't be countered. Also, at the beginning of your end step, discover five. I love this card. Six mana is a bit heavy, dude, but I love everything this card does. The I'm I'm really high on Discover, dude. I'm really excited to see how Discover functions. This, this card basically just lets you cascade for five or less at your end step every turn. So I'm kind of for that. But like I said, that's six. It's pretty pricey. And every spell that you discover can't be countered, including all of your spells. I, I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. It's got a lot of words that I like. Mm-hmm. It's six. David. Why don't you like it? Oh, how do you know? Um, I don't like big, expensive engines, and that's kind of exactly what this is. And then even on top of that, I don't like chaos, which, like, Discover can be cool. It can also do literally nothing for you. So this is a late-gain option that is not... I don't know. It's just it's not doing anything for me. Do you like you know, Shane, 
this would have gone really, really well in your Doctor Who upgrade. Dude, I've probably thought that 14 times through the spoiler season. Shane, I think this card would have been good in your Doctor Who deck because for people that saw all of your crazy spells that can potentially come out, this was on the field. They have no choice but to just accept fate. All right, well, we'll see. I think this would go really well in uh, Zuladon. Moving on, we are going to Akal Pakal, first among equals. It's two and a blue for a 1-5 legendary creature human advisor. At the beginning of each player's end step, if an artifact enters the battlefield under your control this turn, look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Ooh, I like this card. Pay your taxes. Pay what? your taxes. That's true. Yeah, dude. Smothering tax? Yeah, if you get a treasure comes in, this triggers. Yes, sir. That is true. Granted, if we were talking about EDH real quick, you cannot put Smothering Tithe in the deck. Well, uh, sorry. Blue. This would not be the commander in that deck. Hmm. I'm just stating. I think that's why my mind was like, what? Yeah, no, it, it could still go in it. But okay, sorry. Go. I, I think that stuff is still relevant because, I mean, whenever I look at this, like, I don't know. Ha having, a la or having an artifact come in on your opponent's turn is kind of rough. Yeah, it's tough. I don't know. It is a 1-5, so it's definitely going to slow the game down. This thing can block for days. Yeah, I like it. I like this you, card. I think you can make food and clues and whatever on people's turns. Yeah, you can. You can create the tokens. Many, many ways to do that. Would you put this in like a Staxi deck then? That's what I'm no. thinking. Probably right. not. But most of those kinds of done. decks, like you're not really wanting to play on your opponent's turn. So certain typically like fast decks where you're like trying to capitalize on that like those are normally like rule of law where you're trying to make sure that everybody's just not doing things oh yeah let's move on to squirming emergence squirming emergence is one a black and a green for a sorcery with fathomless descent which means return to the battlefield target non-land permanent card in your graveyard with mana value less than or equal to the number of permanent cards in your graveyard this is really good Talk to me. This is a reanimate that can hit non-land permanent, so it's not just restricted to creatures for three mana, and it like it's not gonna hurt you. It doesn't deal with like life loss or anything like that. It's very easy for you to be able to fill up your yard, especially in Demir. Especially oh, in Demir. I know I fucking said it, and then he, I knew you were gonna call me on it. <laughs> uh, especially in Golgari. So like I'm actually really high on this. Any kind of like graveyard recursion deck, this might just be like a, a new auto include. I oh. think I might agree. I'm not 100%. I think, I mean, as cool as it all sounds, I don't know about Descent. I know you could just throw stuff in your graveyard, but throwing stuff in the graveyard to get, what, something less than or equal to the amount of permanent cards in your yeah. graveyard? Yeah, but this one doesn't have to do with it entering the graveyard that turn. This just cares about things in your graveyard. Oh, I yep. know. Yeah, this card's nuts, dude. I just, I just feel like it's very easy for you to self-mill. So, I don't know. You could easily have 20 permanents in your graveyard, and then at that point, like, does it really actually matter what you're targeting? You're going to be able to afford no. it. No. Let's move on to the final Restless Land. It's Restless Reef. It's a land, comes in the battlefield tapped. You can tap it to add a blue or black. And you can pay two a blue and a black. Restless Reef becomes a 4-4 four, four blue and black shark creature token with death touch until end of turn. It's still a land. And whatever Restless Reef attacks, target player mills four cards. Steven, Moore, Demir, mill. Put it in my deck. Yeah, this it might be my deck. second favorite man land of this set, dude. It's actually, really? I think it might be my first. Yeah. I like the flyer, but this is nuts, dude. David and I are on the same page tonight. I, I just like the name. It's like a tongue twister. Restless Reef? Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to hear. Hard to talk about it. <laughs> it's called an alliteration, Dave. You should know that. Restless okay. Reef. There's only reef. two words, though. Restless Reef. Restless uh, Reef. Restless Reef. I think Steven just had a stroke, dude. <laughs> I mean, I told him to say it five times fast. <laughs> Can I see the shark? Oh, yeah, I dude. see the shark, dude. This, yeah. this land's broken. I'm just going to say it. Broken? This will, see, this will see so much play in fucking standard, dude. Okay, I, don't, I, mean, it, I don't know about it, broken. It might see some play. I actually don't think this card is very good. I just like the name. Dog, they're going to they're gonna re, they're gonna bring back Mill and Standard and... This is going to be a four of. Don't you dog me. This is clearly time for sharks. 
Yeah, they're they're bringing mail back. All right, Demir is slowly creeping its way back into standard. All right, this is this is Lament of the Forgotten. It is blue and black for sorcery. It's got Descend eight, which means choose one. If there are eight or more permanent cards in your graveyard, choose one or more instead. You can return target online permanent to its owner's hand, or target opponent discards a card, or look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. This has nothing to do with mill. I mean, the last one put something in your graveyard. Yeah, it's self-mill. Stuff mill. I Not every Demir card has to be mill, but you like it too. But I'd I mean, want it. If you're able to use all three of those modes, this card seems really strong for two mana. It is a lot of value. At the same time, I think I like the red black one better. I like the red black one a lot better too. If we're just going on strictly sorceries that we just saw today, yeah. Yeah, but like, this one has we, three. And it does have three stipulation. So, yeah, this one, this one's got a bigger stipulation, and then even on top of that, like. The return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, like that's cool, but that's just kind of like a tempo swing. They're going to be able to recast whatever it is that they just dropped. I don't know. Maybe you use this and you get rid of their chimiel because then they have to spend another six mana on it. <laughs> um, the discarded card is never really as impactful as what I think most people think that it is. And then like the last ability on it is pretty dope, but I don't know. I mean, it is a good card. So here's my question: how how would these triggers resolve? Top to bottom. Always. All right. So then I think that it's not as bad as you were just saying, David, because like, what if they don't have any cards in hand? You return that Chamil, obviously, to their hand, and then they got to discard it. I mean, that is something that you can do here. But that is also going to require that they have no cards in hand. Mm. Yeah, listen, we're in a really good color to discard cards. Well, I would just leave open man at a counter, whatever they're going to play again, Dave. Dave, I know you like your lands. So let's talk about one. Ooh. This is Echoing Deeps. It's a land. It's a cave. It says, you may have Echoing Deeps enter the battlefield tapped as a copy of any land card in a graveyard. Except, it's a cave. In addition to its other types, it also taps for a colorless. This is you, nuts. So if you don't good? use that, is it untapped? No. It's still tapped. Enter's tapped. Oh, so it always enter. Oh, okay. So it just says, you may have it enter the battlefield tapped. Oh, good point. Good point. Good point. I'm, I mean, I'm here for this. I mean, this gives yeah. me an extra copy of Wasteland or Strip Mine. Oh, dude, don't even. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's I where was your thinking brain that... goes, dude. That's so stupid. I was, thinking, where my brain goes. I was thinking another fetch. That's... Yeah, but where's the fun in that? That doesn't make you groan quite as much. It doesn't. And also, that'd be a slow, that'd be a evolving wild that we do not like, Dave uh, Hunter. Yeah. I mean, I'm I I didn't think that at all. I What'd thought this would be really good with, like, Dark Deaths. Oh, yeah, one of the ones that, like, just make a bunch of mana? No, this is the one that makes you a 2020. Yeah. Uh, I mean, sure. It's the Thespian yeah, the stage same... Dark Deaths combo? Yeah, so I, I, I'm actually not high on that line, but I do think this is kind of like a fun little flexible card. I do think that you probably need to either be in self-mill or in, like, a actual land matters deck for this deck, or for this card to actually see any play, though. And this is a Dark Depths is a legendary, so technically can't have two. I mean, yeah, I'd be in your graveyard. You won't have two. It'd be in your graveyard. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on, let's talk about Tarion's Soul Cleaver. It's one shark mana for legendary artifact equipment. Equipped creature has vigilance. And whenever another artifact or creature is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on equipped creature. Equip cost of two. This Christ. doesn't say permanent card, which means treasures and all those cool things you can sacrifice count. Jesus Christ, it's Jason Bourne. It's good old Tarion's Soul Claw. Soul Claw. Cleaver. Whatever, dude. I just made that up. This works really well, actually. Like, depending on how important map tokens are, this could be pretty impactful. Yeah. And hey, now you're working this, with portals. This is a very good equipment. And I can see this in. Counter matter decks. You don't say. Yeah, isn't that cool? He he just said. I just said. I just said it. Okay, relax. This is a good card. Good card, good. Good card, good for Terry and Soul Cleaver. They announced some Jurassic World cards today. Haven't done that since, since the debut stream. But we got some today, including Chris Pratt himself. That oh is my God. Owen Grady, 
Raptor Trainer. It's one, a red, and a green for a 3-2 legendary creature, human soldier scientist. It's got partner with blue, loyal raptor. It's got a, an ability where you can tap it. Put your choice of a menace, trample, reach, or haste counter on target dinosaur. Activate only as a sorcery. <laughs> Gruel we, just keeps on grueling. How we feeling about Chris Pratt? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I really struggle with universes beyond. Like, if, if it's coming from another game, like the 40k ones, I think it was fine. If it's coming from a, a movie, this is really hard for me. And, like, I don't know. The card itself, also, I'm not really the biggest fan of. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it gives things that dinosaurs probably already have. Well, Hunter, I'll tell you what, man. Did they announce Blue Loyal Raptor so we can see what it partners with? We sure can. Blue Loyal Raptor is two, a green, and a blue. For a 5-4 legendary creature dinosaur. It's got partner with Owen Grady Raptor Trainer. And for each kind of counter on Blue Loyal Raptor, each other dinosaur you control enters the battlefield with a counter of that kind on it. I love it. So yeah, picture them being combined now, and you see the synergies. That seems cool, dude. See, seems cool, dude. I don't dude. know. I, I don't... You got dinos in here. Uh, you're gonna like it. I yeah. guarantee it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sold on the partners. They're okay to me. But I'll tell you what. This final card we're talking about, also from Jurassic World, it's called Hunting Velociraptor. It's two and a red for a three-two creature dinosaur. It's got first strike and says dinosaur spells you cast have prowl two and a red, which means you may cast a spell for its prowl cost. If you dealt combat damage to a player this turn with a creature with any of its creature types, dinosaurs are now all three mana. Well, this has got to die. <laughs> Clever Very girl. Much so. I wow. love it. Of course I you don't. do, dude. This is going straight into the dinosaur deck. Can't have too many large creature spells at three mana. This is a fantastic spell. Dude, your mana curves are going to look so dumb. It's just going to be. Straight line of three. <laughs> and that's the problem. Why? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. Cards of nuts, dude. Uh, what, how do we... Yeah, Hunter. Making all your guys three mana is good. Mm -hmm. Hunter, do you think this might go into the uh, Velociraptor deck? We'll see. I think that answer is <laughs> yes. I hope this card is like pre-selling for like, I don't know, $90 so that you can't. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> Clever girl. All right. Well, that is going to do it for us today. Before we get out of here, let's talk about our favorite cards. I'll go first. This final one we just talked about. Hunting Shocker. Velociraptor. Raptor. I'm the dinosaur guy. That's my favorite card. I want a copy. Uh, going over to Steven, what was your favorite card? Hunter, you know, there were a lot of cards that we talked about today, and it was a tough choice, but I'm going to have to go with, ugh, I don't know. I guess I'll go with the ancient one. Oh, you mean that 2-mana 8-8? Eight, eight? That Mills yeah. and Demir? Yeah, it's pretty good. Hey, David, what was your favorite card today? You know what? My favorite card is also the Ancient One. Wow. I, I just think that it's going to be, like, high impact. I don't know. Um, I think this is gar I, I think this is going to be another card that's, like, super easy for you to pull off in older formats. Um, so, I don't know. I'm, I'm getting, like, some Hogak vibes off of this, and I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just me no. um, having PTSD and scary thoughts, but... Both big, big creatures that uh, care about the graveyard and uh, are relatively cheap. Shane, what was your favorite card today? I'm glad you asked, dude. Mine's the ancient one. Are you, really? <laughs> are we, we're, we're three out of four for the ancient one, huh? Oh, we kind of like dinosaurs. So. Uh, <laughs> I like dinosaurs. But that is going to do it for us today. Comment down below what was your favorite card we talked about today. What you think is the most busted? Was the ancient one like all the other guys said? Let us know. In the description, you will find links to our Instagram, our TikTok, and our Twitter. That is at Guys at Magic for each one. Especially our Instagram, because like we mentioned in the beginning, we post the commons and uncommons, not just the rares and mythics we talk about today. Also, you'll find a link to our Patreon. That's right. We have a Patreon. If you want to support us any more than you already do, check the link in the description. We have exclusive gameplays up on there as well. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And until the next video, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace. Later. Bye-bye.
Bye.